Hi everyone and welcome to this very special presentation where we meet master craftsman model builder Luke Towen from Queensland, Australia. Um, Luke has a large following on YouTube. He's probably going to crack his 740,000th subscriber soon. Um, and his channel, which is Boulder Creek Railroad, shows his skills in diorama building, model railroad scenery, gadgets and gizmos, gadgets and gizmos that uh, every modeler wants and needs, but uh, only some are lucky enough to get. Check out his uh, video on his 3D resin printer. Very interesting. Anyhow, back in January 2019, I received an email from Luke, uh, whom I've been following on YouTube for many years. Um, he's a sort of a local celebrity in the scale modeling field here in Australia. So we uh, had been corresponding via email and I'd just like to read a few extracts of his emails to get the sense of his introduction to Magna Rail. <coughs> Pardon me. Uh, it says, Hi Clyde, uh, my name is Luke Towen, it's T-O-W-A-N by the way, and I run the YouTube channel Boulder Creek Railroad. I've been searching for a way to have cars and vehicles run on my layout and the obvious choice was Fella, but that was only because it was the only one I knew about. I never went down the route of using the Fella car system because it was too difficult to retrofit the motors into my typical Aussie vehicles. I recently discovered Magna Rail and really like it. I'm surprised that up until about four hours ago I didn't even know that Magna Rail existed and it looked so cool. As soon as I saw it on another YouTube video, my imagination went wild. I'll likely do a diorama video showing a complete tutorial with the Magna Rail being the centre feature. I can show the installation as well and how easy it is to custom fit virtually any vehicle to the system. This alone is a huge selling point for me. Just remember these are extracts, there's other bits and pieces in between, but anyhow, these are the important parts. Um, you have no idea how over the moon I am. I've been hanging out to get cars and trucks running on my layouts and I can just see this will be an awesome video. I'll let you know as soon as I receive the starter kit and I'll send you updates as I progress with the video. Well, three months later, Luke released his video and now you can watch it in full by clicking the link above. Luke has graciously allowed me to access the Magna Rail portion and put it into a shortened version on my channel. So thanks to Luke, uh, you're watching this condensed version of his video now. So sit back and watch. Um, this is how a craftsman installs a Magna Rail system and I'm sure you'll enjoy it. Then if you're still interested in Luke's work, go to his channel at YouTube by typing in Luke Towen, L-U-K-E, T-O-W-A-N in the YouTube search bar, or just click on the link that I put in the information section below. Um, once again, thanks to Luke, uh, my many thanks to Luke, uh, for allowing me to present the Magna Rail portion of his video to you. Um, I just noticed it's probably going to be about 15 minutes long, which is a, still a very long video. So this is a, uh, a one cup of coffee video, but if you're going to watch uh, his video as well, um, I'd be going getting a couple of cups of coffee and a bit of a snack to have on the way. But well worth it. You'll be very impressed um, with the standard of his work and how he's integrated the Magna Rail system. Um, those of you that are querying supply at the moment, um, I'm still hoping to hear something out of France uh, in the next few weeks. Uh, the delay has been on the supply of um, the fast motors, which a lot of you are wanting to do the vehicles and such, and you require that for the slider set. So hopefully that, uh, that all is going to catch up. Um, and by the end of April, we should be shooting out some stock on a regular basis. I do have some bicycle sets uh, still available and of course so some of the spare parts 
um, and uh, some of the, the bicycle uh, ready to run units. So drop me a line. Um, the email's on my website, or you can just do magnaraloz at gmail.com. No, just at gmail.com. Um, and uh, if I've got the stock, I'll send it out. But I'm still not putting anything up on the website until I've got a constant supply because uh, it's going crazy. Um, and uh, yeah, I wanted to do right by the people that are, are serious about this and want to get the stock in fairly fast. Um, so send me an email. I'll put you on the wait list and I'll be actioning that wait list as the stock comes in. Okay, happy modelling. Um, I'm sure you will enjoy, uh, as I said, Luke's video uh, to appreciate his model building skills apart from the fact that he's done Magna Rail for us. Okay, happy modelling till we see you next time. Bye. Hey all and welcome back to another tutorial packed full of tips, tricks, techniques and some awesome animations. This is by no means a quick tutorial, so grab a large cup of coffee, sit back and relax while I step you through the creation of this fantastic diorama. For this back road corner street I simply used two HO scale vehicles to get a rough road width. To make the surface of the road, I have to consider how the Magnarail system will work. I chose to use 0.9mm thick sheet of plastic from the local office supply store. The good thing about the plastic being transparent is that I can easily transfer the road I drew onto the foam onto the sheet of plastic ready to be cut. And this stuff was really easy to cut with a hobby knife. Now here's where the fun starts. The Magnarail system is a way of getting cars to operate on your layout. The basic starter kit has everything you need to get a small loop of road animated, but if you want to do a larger area, you can order additional sections as needed. The instructions are very straightforward. Each part comes on a sprue, and once they have been removed and the excess flashing removed, you're ready to start assembly. Because I'm working directly on foam, I had to make a few modifications to how the track gets installed. It's designed to be screwed onto a wood base, however I decided to remove the screw tabs from the sections of track and instead embedded them into the foam. All the components that form the track are traced onto the foam surface and with the centre of each lane marked, I trace the track onto the foam working along until it connects in both directions. I added a little bit of an overshoot on the corners so the larger vehicles could get around without sideswiping any pedestrians standing on the corner. To carve out the groove for the track I'm using a Dremel with a router attachment. The depth is set so once the Magnarail track is installed it will sit perfectly flush with the surface of the foam. Now it's just a matter of following the lines traced earlier. Starting from one end, I lower each component into the foam and gradually connect additional sections of track until I reach the other end. You can see here that one side of the track just so happened to match up perfectly with the turning loop, however the other side didn't quite match up perfectly. It was easy enough to trim away the extra length and sand it back to a perfect fit. The wiring components consisted of an on-off switch, a switch to reverse the direction of track, a speed controller to speed up or slow down the vehicles, and a power socket and a battery. It can also be powered with a 12 volt power supply as well. I wired everything together so it can be accessed from the front of the diorama. Once it's all connected, I give it a quick test just to make sure it's all working. The links are easy enough to connect together. Small magnets are pressed into the links at the desired locations. Just make sure the polarity of the magnets are around the right way. I had a small Santa on a bicycle that had the magnets already attached, 
So I used that as a guide to make sure I was being consistent with getting the polarity the right way around as I installed the magnets. With the magnets installed, I can start placing the links onto the track. When it comes to getting the links to join up perfectly, you may need to swap out some longer links for shorter links or vice versa until you get a perfect length. There should be very minimal slack once it's all connected. Before gluing the road, I make sure to use a wire brush to roughen up the surface of the foam. And I also lightly sand the underside of the road so that the glue will be able to hold the road down firmly. I used 5 minute epoxy to glue the road to the foam, however this probably wasn't a great idea. It did work in the end, however the epoxy cured very fast, which meant I had to rush to get the road down in time. The road surface was flexible enough to allow me to bend it up and work in sections at a time, however in future I'll try to find a glue that has a much longer working time to make the job a little easier. Just be very careful that you don't accidentally glue the road mechanism. Any excess glue is removed from the edges so that there is nothing in the way when it's time to add the guttering. Now is probably a good time to talk about getting cars moving. These metal sliders have a small arm that is bent up and two spots for the magnets. To enable the small arm to connect to the vehicle, I added a small piece of brass rod just big enough so the arm on the slider could fit into it. Magnets were glued to the slider whilst it was sitting on the road over a magnet. This way I can be sure the polarity is the correct way around and that's it. You'll also want to make sure the wheels on whatever vehicle you're using turn freely. That's the great thing about this type of car system. You can pretty well use any type of vehicle you have and get it working on the layout. It's especially useful for those working on smaller scales like N scale. Now it's time to paint the road. Rust-Oleum Flat Grey Primer and Satin Heirloom White is the colours of choice, but it will work with a range of other colours. It can be a bit messy, so make sure to cover anything in the vicinity to protect it from paint. The foam around the road will not take spray paint well, so it gets masked to prevent it from melting away. The grey is the base coat and it gets applied over the entire road surface. The white is the texture layer, so it is applied from quite a distance away. It leaves a speckled texture on the road surface. I'm basically just dusting the road with this colour. Because it's applied from a distance away, some of the paint will dry before sticking to the road. This dry, dusty layer is wiped away before the next step. Weathering the road is basically the same technique we used on the footpath. Just be aware that the thinners will soften the Rust-Oleum paint layer, so avoid spending too long in one spot with the paintbrush. I keep moving along the road applying the wash, leaving heavier spots and lighter spots as we did on the footpath. To change the colour tone of the road, I used Vallejo Dark Sea Grey. It's a very thin layer of paint, being sure not to obscure the details underneath. Road markings are painted onto the road surface. It takes time to do all the masking, but in the end once you finish, it will make a huge difference and is definitely worth the time and effort. Masking is really important. Remember to take your time and ensure everything is masked properly to avoid getting paint where it's not wanted. When mixing the paint, try to avoid thinning it too much. You don't want the paint to remain runny as it gets applied, otherwise you'll find the paint will soak under the masking tape. Road repair patches are simply added with a paper template and a sponge. I find the Woodland Scenics Asphalt colour is a good fresh tarmac colour. I make sure to create a few templates of different shapes to avoid having it look unrealistic when multiple patches are close to each other. To weather the lanes of the road, a light dusting of a dark earth pigment is applied. With this powder, a little goes a long way. Only a light application is needed to make a big difference. 
road cracks are drawn on with a felt tip pen and by using a pencil I can add cracking to the painted lines and you can also simulate faded paint using the pencil as well. Now that the road is complete I seal everything down with three coats of testers dull coat. The reason it gets sealed with three coats of dull coat and no less is because the MagnaRail system uses small sliders that are dragged over the road surface. To prevent the paint from being scratched away it needs a good layer of protection and so far the dull coat has worked well. And we're done. The scene truly comes to life with the moving elements and I really love the MagnaRail system because it can be basically made to work with just about any HO or even N scale vehicle. Even this tiny forklift looks very cool running along the street and not to mention the bike riders. I hope you enjoyed watching this very long and detailed tutorial and I hope you managed to pick up a few tips and techniques along the way. If you like what I'm doing here on YouTube and you'd like to help support the channel, be sure to check out my Patreon page. Cheers and thanks for watching.